So I'm Lauren Winter. I am a science teacher at Fort Dodge Senior High School. I have been teaching now that I just finished my fifth year of teaching. I've taught ninth grade science. I've taught chemistry. I've taught physics, kind of taught it all. In my journey, in my five years, I've I kind of discovered this online blended learning opportunity and kind of have been running with it the past, well, if you count last year as a full year, year, maybe year and a half, year and three quarters. And so it's been an interesting experience. I honestly stumbled upon blended learning. Very happenstance, our director of secondary education heard about, um, I believe it was Indianola at the time and what they were doing. And thought, you know, I'd like to do that, something like that in Fort Dodge. And so she got a cohort of us together and said, hey, let's take one flip one. And so we did two days in person. And, you know, a couple of us really were taken by this idea of flipping our classroom or even just blending it, which I had never thought of. Flipping my classroom, I had heard of before, but I always knew, well, our kids never did homework outside of school. So I didn't know what that would work. But then when I heard about blending, I'm like, you know, this is really cool. I mean, this is something I think I could do. And so after that class, I just dove right in and I said, you know, I'm going to take the next one and see where this takes me. And so, you know, I did blend flip one and two, and then I did three and four. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do the Drake online teaching certificate while I'm at it. I mean, I might as well. It's good pedagogy and it's stuff I would probably want to do anyway, eventually. And so that's kind of how I got to where I am now, trying to just take my classes and make what I'm doing in the online portion of them more purposeful and not just kind of, hey, I'm going to throw this in here and there and not have any real connection to what we're doing. Well, um, I used to use Google Classroom, and then after taking Blend Flip, I decided to try out Moodle. Some of my kids are still giving me resistance, but it's gotten better. Eighth grade teachers that come up, that they come from right before me, they are using Moodle as well, and so they, they're kind of used to it now. And so I don't have to fight that barrier. But when they come into my classroom, basically every day they start, I have a bell ringer up projected for them, but they go to Moodle. They open a journal. I have a journal entry set up. I do it about every two weeks and they have the dates in their journal and they find their journal and they, they answer their bell ringer um, and they save it in there. And I kind of give them feedback on their bell ringers then digitally at the end of those two weeks and how they're doing and they get a score from that. After our bell ringer, we have various activities that we do depending on our learning target for the day. Part of a curriculum that we've been using in our ninth grade science class uh, actually has a lot of online components. And I used to send kids to a separate website to do the online activities. And it just felt like there was too much confusion. They would ask, am I supposed to be on Moodle? Am I supposed to be on this other website? So the beginning of this school year, I figured out that I could take a lot of those activities and the embedded simulations that they had on their website. And it's all creative, common things that you can kind of feel. And so I started building pages in Moodle and I started embedding the simulations and the activities right into Moodle. So they never had to go to that website. They could go straight to Moodle. We would find the activity we're doing. So I might say, go to Moodle. We're going to do activity 2.2 today. They can pull it up with their partner and they can work through the questions and look at the simulations. And then typically I still have them record a lot of their ideas in their science notebook to try and keep the science work that we're doing authentic and not have everything be online. But that way, I think it's giving students an opportunity to engage in things online, but then we can still have those conversations that when we're in the classroom together. And so at the end of every class, we usually have a guiding question and that's related to the learning target for the day. So I take our learning target, I make it a question and I, and I see if they can answer it as a formative assessment. And usually that guiding question is then again done digitally through Moodle. I have it set up as a journal question so I can go right back in after they're done and I can give them feedback and a score and say, you know, hey, you're kind of missing the target here or hey, you did a really great job and this is why. And so that's kind of a typical day in my classroom. I feel like using Chromebooks and things in my first couple of years of teaching, I was always scrambling to find like, how can I fit technology in? Like, I feel like I'm pressured to do that because we're one to one. And now I feel like my classroom, it's just technology is what we do. It's integrated. It's seamless. I don't have kids coming to class anymore. Very rarely do they say, well, I don't have my Chromebook or it's not charged. Like they know when I come to science, I've got to have my Chromebook. I've got to have it charged because we're guaranteed to use it every single day. And I think that's helped a lot. Kids don't see technology as an add-on, but it's just technology is learning at this point for them. I believe here at senior high, I am the only teacher who is using Moodle. I mean, that's where I get a lot of pushback from kids a lot. Why are you using Google Classroom? Everybody else uses Google Classroom. So I tell them, you know, you're right. 
but you could go into a job when you leave high school, you could go on to college. I can guarantee you that they're not all going to use Google Classroom. You're going to have to learn to navigate different things online. And I'm just teaching you another way to do that. And I said, it's a lot less pressure if you're learning how to navigate things like this in an environment in high school versus a job where you're getting paid to figure all of this out or in college when it's really hard because you're already learning all of these new things that are difficult. I don't want you to have to learn how to learn online too. And so I try and sell it that way. Some of them buy in, some of them are like, whatever, Mrs. Winter, because they're ninth graders and that's what they do. (laughs) But I do, I'm trying to get them to see that technology is going to be in your future, no matter what you do. It does not matter what your choice is after you leave here. It's And if you can learn some of those skills now, I think you'll be in a better place. I think for one thing, uh, kids in my classroom, I always struggled with attendance issues. Kids would be gone and they'd come back and they'd have no idea what, what they're doing or why they did it or where to find it. And I felt like with Google Classroom, it was just an endless stream of granted Google Classrooms improved since I used it, but it's been, a, it's just an endless stream of let me scroll and find this thing. After taking the blend flip class, I'm like, wow, I can have this really set up and really organized because I'm a hyper organized person. <laughs> but now I can be like, hey, you were gone yesterday. You just need to go check out activity 2.3. Look through the agenda. Everything that you might need that's digital is linked in there for you. If it's not linked, you're just writing it in your notebook. And even like if a kid says I'm going to be gone, like I have a pretty good idea now I can say, hey, go check out activity 2.4. This is exactly what you're going to need. And so for me, I think it helped fill the need of kids who either have attendance issues, they don't feel comfortable being here. And so if there's a way for them to keep up on classwork at home, it kind of eliminates some of those challenges that they're dealing with. Um, What better time than this school year to have a blended classroom with kids quarantined at home and expecting to keep up on what they're doing there, what with what we're doing here. I think about when I had kids quarantined, I would have never felt comfortable zooming them into our live class had I not taken those classes. I would have been like, you want me to teach kids at home and in the classroom at the exact same time? How am I going to do that? But I think that blending and flipping in the online courses I took, they just gave me the confidence like technology is not a scary thing. It's okay if you screw it up. It's okay if it doesn't go well the first time you're learning. And I think that's great for kids to see because I tell them that all the time. You know, you can mess something up. It's fine. We're learning. That's why we're here. And so for me, I think it's just, it's kind of made me uncomfortable at times. And it's got me to really question why I'm doing what I'm doing in my room and to think about like, is it best for kids? Is it what they're going to need? And so I think it's just made me kind of take that outside perspective again that I did as a beginning, like not that I've been teaching forever, but as a first year teacher where I'm like, huh, should I do this? Should I do that? So it's really pushed me to reflect, I think, on my teaching practices and overall just, I think, made me a better teacher too because of it. I took blend flip one and two. Um, I remember doing blend flip two in the summer and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Like, why am I doing, it seemed like I can't do this, like building my Moodle course from scratch. But man, once I got that Moodle course built, life was pretty smooth sailing from there. And then I did blend flip three and four. And while I was doing those classes, I did the online uh, certificate through Drake. And so I took a bunch of courses with Evan Abbey, uh, primarily looking at giving online feedback and assessments and just that interaction between kids in the online environment. So I took a lot of those courses. I also got a book. I won a book at a, like a PD thing. And they're like, pick whatever book you want from Amazon. I was like, okay. So I picked the blending your classroom. I can't remember the exact title of it. It's a very popular one. And so I read that as I kind of dove into this arena. And then, you know, I've taken some of what I've learned and we've been asked in PD for our building to just kind of share out technology things that we're comfortable with. So I've been able to share out, you know, some little tools that I've learned or tricks that I've gained through this professional development that I've done on my own to really kind of share it with colleagues and and build other teachers' capacity at the same time. Some of the challenges that I've overcome would be like last year when I, I was just starting Moodle, I remember the first day I was like, I had all these great like learning station set up on Moodle and I'm like, hey kids, go log in. And I thought I had everything set up and I forgot they needed a code to log in from you. And so I remember emailing you like frantic, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? My kids are in my room. They can't get on the Moodle. I have all this stuff there. And luckily you're a quick emailer. 
and I got them set up. So for me, I learned, okay, I got to embed all this in when I, when I first get them logged into Moodle. And so now I have screenshots of everything and, Hey, this is the code you need and this and this. So that was like my initial challenge. And I'm like, Oh boy, what did I just do to myself? But then it was just, you know, getting Moodle set up to where I wanted it. Um, I thought I had it in a good place. And then even this school year, I've tweaked it even more, even as the year progressed, even at the end of last week, I was like, yeah, I don't really like this. I'm going to move it around. So I like that flexibility that I have and that it's there next year. And then I don't have to start from scratch next year. I can just kind of tweak things again. So that's exciting to me. But I, other challenges I think is just remembering my purpose. Why am I putting something online? Is this what I really want to do online? Or is it something that would be better for kids to do face to face? And so I think for me now, it's just remembering that purpose, figuring out how I want to do things, and then remembering that if it doesn't work, it's fine. And then just kind of, you know, just taking risks. Like, you know, we did a video analysis project in science one day, and I'm like, you know what, I've never really used Flipgrid. I dabbled in it, but hey, let's just try it. And I set up a Flipgrid and I put in all these instructions and, you know, it turned out really cool. So I think it's just overcoming me as a barrier, like, hey, you can do anything. You just have to try. And if you fail, it's fine. It's not going to be a big deal. So I think for me, those are my challenges and just getting kids to see the buy-in and and the purpose for why I'm doing what I'm doing and not seeing it as a different learning platform, but just something different. I've had kids who tell me now at the end of this school, you're like, you know what? No, I kind of like Moodle. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. And I think it's just teaching kids how to use it and not expecting them to know how, because I think I'm so used to, and a lot of us teachers are used to kids knowing technology, but it's technology on their phones. It's Snapchat, it's Instagram. It's not a learning management system. You know, they need to know how to navigate and they need to be reminded how to navigate, even if they've done it four times. It's just, it's new to them and they need, they need teaching like they do in anything. And then it's, it's different from Google Classroom. So then, you know, they need rationale and they want to know why you're doing it. I think once you give them all of those resources, I think it helps with some of the student resistance. I even had kids saying, you know, at the end of the year, like, well, I actually didn't mind this. It's, it's a little bit more straightforward and easy to navigate. So I think it just takes time for change. Change is hard for everyone. Like I mentioned previously, you know, I feel so much more comfortable using technology and it's just, just small, subtle changes, but I even feel better. You know, I, before taking the classes that I did, I would have been terrified to make a screencast of my face and my voice over a video. And now it's like second nature to me, you know, my, I'm on a building leadership team and they said, Hey, we, you know, we need to make a kind of a tutorial for teachers so that they can remember how to navigate this system. And I'm like, oh, I'll make it, I'll make a screencast. And I, I put it together, it took me no time. I would have never imagined doing that. I would have been terrified. So I think for me, that's a benefit. I am just more of a risk taker. I'm more comfortable just putting myself out there. If I'm gone now for a sub, I can leave a video for kids to watch and say, hey, you need to watch this. This is what you need to do. And I can show you exactly how to do it. And I think that's kind of cool and take some of the pressure off of my sub. So I just feel like technology is just very much a part of what I do now. And I don't feel pressure to use it because it just comes so naturally at this point. And I also think a benefit for me is once you get that structure down and your kids kind of are in that routine and they know how it works, it, it makes teaching a little bit more fun because you don't have to worry about the nitty gritty details of transitioning and management because everything is laid out for them and they know exactly what they can expect every day in your room. I don't have to deal with Chromebooks not charged. I don't have to deal with kids losing their Chromebooks or breaking them. Like they just come and they know what they need and, and they dump, they just jump right in. So I think it just taking those surprises out of kids' day to day is good because some kids strive in environments that are very predictable and routine. And I think I've been able to provide that by setting all of this up ahead of time. And I think it makes it more routine for me and more comfortable. So I can really focus on student achievement and giving them the feedback that they need. I have a lot of kids. I think back to before I started using Moodle and I was just diving into our online curriculum and everything was online. Like the entire activity was online. They answered it online. They viewed everything online. Their tests were online. And I, I got a lot of feedback from kids like, I don't like learning online. This is too much. Like I don't, and I'm struggling with this. And then I think back to last year and I had, it was still quite a bit online because I was still using that other website. 
but I didn't get as much resistance. And then this year when I got rid of that other website completely and blended it all into Moodle, it was just seamless. They could just pull up Moodle and then they had that up on one side and they had their computer out and they had their notebook in front of them and they were working together. And I just didn't get as many complaints about, I don't like learning online. Like, I don't feel like I'm learning. I'm, I'm doing everything on a computer. And maybe part of that is because some of them did do online learning for a trimester and realized, whoa, I don't like learning online all by myself with nobody to help me. But I think, yeah, it's taken away some of that barrier for kids to think I can't do this online because now it's just, it doesn't seem like it's for them. It, they don't notice it. And I'm like, you just did a complete activity online. You just did an online simulation and, and they don't even bat an eye. So I think that's kind of great too. Oh my goodness. I think back to last March when the world shut down and we were told you are going to teach the last six weeks of school online. Granted, it wasn't required for kids, but I thought big deal. Like I have all these resources at my fingertips. Like this should not be hard. They, they already know how to navigate Moodle. They know where to go to find everything. Like I can send them an email and say, here, here's this, this, and this. I turned to the student personalized learning system from the AEA and I said, Hey, I can pull a bunch of this stuff in for those activities in physics that we aren't gonna to be together to do hands-on. They have modules in there that I can just steal, tweak to fit what I need for class and kids can do them that way. So if they choose to keep learning, they have that option. So I think even last spring before, I think teachers realized what they were in for, like I was ready. Like I, the timing could not have been more perfect from when I finished my courses to that happening. And then going into this year, I did some learning over the summer. There were like some online learning sessions through the AEA, different seminars or whatever you want to call them. And I, I watched a bunch of them and I thought, you know what? I know a lot of this already. This is good stuff. But then I could put that out in the fall for teachers because there was always that looming possibility of going to online or going hybrid. And I think for me, I was just so prepared. Like I know there were teachers who barely used Google Classroom prior to the pandemic. And so for them, just using that even was going to be a steep learning curve. Like, how do I put this online so kids can find it? And for me, it was just like, yeah, and it's just another thing that I'm going to do because it's what I'm already doing. So, yeah, I mean, as horrible as the pandemic was and still is from a teaching aspect, I think it was a lot less overwhelming and scary for me because I was definitely more prepared. And, it, and I think it's shown that this is kind of the way learning is going to move anyway. And so... Why not be at the forefront of it rather than trying to catch up at the end? I feel like a lot of the things I do sometimes in the online component are very much student to teacher or teacher to student. And I would really like to build in more of that student to student interactivity in my Moodle and with whatever we're doing in the online. We do a lot of that face to face, but I do want to get students comfortable with, with having a discussion or critiquing something online and learning how to kind of take that. Because I know even as adults, we read emails and we're like, you can't pull out the tone. You can't pull out any of that. And so you kind of leave yourself wondering, like, what are they really saying? And so I think that's going to be a goal for my next year. You know, since I do guiding questions at the end of every activity, I might set, start setting them up instead of as a journal, setting them up as like a discussion forum. So, hey, today you're going to do it as a discussion forum. Put your response out there read your classmates' responses, and then maybe give them some feedback. Like, do you think they met the learning target based on their response? And if you don't think so, how could they tweak their answer to make sure they're showing that they've learned it? So just kind of trying to build in. I tried some discussion forums last year. They just didn't go that well. Kids would just say like, yes, no, even with like prompting them and saying like, this is a bad response. This is a good response. I just have to do more of that. And I think now I'm in a better place and a more authentic place for them to have these discussions. Previously, I wanted them to have discussions about things that were very, sometimes very much black and white. And so they'd be like, yeah, what they said or what they said. And I think now with these guiding questions, like they can really look at it and they can say, oh, you really have met the learning target. And then they can think, well, I, my response is not anything like yours. So I think now maybe I'm not meeting the target because I'm trying to build in goal setting too for my kids. And so I think this would be a really great way to leverage Moodle and the discussion forums and getting kids to talk to each other online because some kids will never speak to another student in class. And so I'm still giving them a voice in the online space and making them feel like they can contribute even if they're not comfortable doing it face to face. So I think that's where I'd like to take it next year. Now that I've got it kind of hopefully built where I want it and don't have to tweak too much or perfect anything else. 
can really start building in more of that interactivity and making it more usable for kids. I've also, I've been hearing about the badges and making, building badges in. I have kids who love to game. And so I think, hmm, well, if I could leverage those badges and maybe get them to buy in a little bit more with that, maybe that's something else I can do too. So got a couple of things in my horizon that I, I want to try and, and build in, which I think now I'm at a good place. I think my advice would be, you know, the blended flip classrooms use the analogy of a swimming pool. Like you are, you're in the shallow end, you're kind of getting your toes wet. Don't jump right into the deep end where everything is online, but kind of finding that middle ground. I think you do with technology and blending, you just jump in and you find out where you're comfortable and then you build your capacity as you get used to it. Technology doesn't have to be a scary thing. Failing doesn't have to be a scary thing. You don't have to have it perfect all of the time. I think for me, it's just finding what works and then really expanding that. And then you can, you know, once you've got it in a good place, just start adding on and, and, and just build your capacity that way. So, yeah, I think for me, it, it, the biggest thing is just try it. And you might be surprised at how good you actually are at it.